Hi, I'm Allie Grogan. I'm a Leadership Studies major here at the University of Richmond, and today I'm with Dr. Foner to talk a bit about his work with the Reconstruction Era. Dr. Foner, thank you so much for being here with us today. I'm happy to be here with you. So my first question for you is just what initially drew you to study the Reconstruction Era in the first place? Well, I was in college and then graduate school in the 1960s when the Civil Rights Revolution was taking place, and that kind of catalyzed a real change in historical scholarship that many historians and students like myself became very interested in you know where these events had come from in American history and a, a very large number of uh, scholars began studying slavery emancipation and eventually that kind of fed over into looking in new ways at the reconstruction era so it is often the case that what interests historians begins with the world they're living in. I've once read that you express skepticism regarding kind of Hollywood history, and I'm just wondering <laughs> what your opinion is regarding the use of historical films to teach history uh, to people <laughs> in classrooms, and do you think that um, historical films will ever be well done or will ever be truly accurate? I, I, historians have learned never to say never. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, uh, uh, Hollywood, uh, I've become very frustrated with Hollywood history. I've actually been an advisor on one or two things. Um, I've been consulted. Uh, I think uh, these are two worlds that really don't have a lot in common. Um, and I, I am actually opposed to using f Hollywood films in history classes. Mm. Use it in a film class or something like that. Okay. It would be as if you were, when you're studying ancient Rome, you used Shakespeare's Julius Caesar as your textbook, so to speak. That is one of the great plays ever written. But it's not history, really. It's Shakespeare's take on issues of, you know, loyalty and rebellion and things like that. And, you know, I, I, most of the people who make Hollywood history don't know that much about history. So I say, let them do their thing. I go and enjoy these movies. Mm -hmm. Actually, I don't, but, um, <laughs> and I complain a lot, and my wife won't even go with me anymore. <laughs> but, um, you know, these are two different worlds. If you had the ability to travel back in time and share a meal with any political or military leader in the Civil War or Reconstruction era, who would you choose and <laughs> why? Um, what would you choose well, to I talk guess, about? Well, uh, I, I guess my answer is probably fairly conventional, but uh, I wouldn't mind sitting down with Abraham Lincoln and me having too. a nice <laughs> chat about his career. I did write a book about Lincoln. Mm -hmm. And um, although there are thousands of books about Lincoln, as you know, uh, he remains a somewhat elusive character. So speaking of, of Lincoln and what I'm learning right now in one of my Civil War leadership classes is all about Lincoln's involvement with the political parties back in the Civil War era. Um, and in several of your publications, you've addressed the influence of political parties. Um, and given our current political climate, um, I just wanted to see if you could speak to the influence of the party system and whether or not you think that it's an effective. Well, Lincoln was a party man. You know, I mean, right. he believed in political parties. He was a very devout Whig while that party was in existence. When they collapsed, he became a very committed Republican. Um, and he used the Republican Party. The, having a powerful party behind him was a tremendous boon to him during the Civil War. In a mm. great war like that, you've got to mobilize public sentiment as best you can, and the party helped, helped him do that. Um, we live in, a, obviously, a different world, a different political world today. The parties really, I think, are much less important than they used to be. The parties today don't have the coherence and strength that they did uh, in the 19th century, and that's in a way a loss for our government. It, it helped the government function better to have mm -hmm. strong political parties. Mm -hmm. I agree. So what are you currently doing now? What, <laughs> what am I doing? What are you working on now? Uh, well, I'm, I'm more or less retired from teaching as mm -hmm. of last spring, but um, I'm finding that retirement is more work than teaching. <laughs> I'm going around as like I am here today. I'm very happy to do it, giving lectures on one thing or another. A lot of people are interested nowadays in reconstruction. Mm -hmm. uh, other lectures on other things. I've written quite a few books and I talk about them. Uh, I don't have another writing project in mind mm -hmm. right this minute, but I'm sure something will um, come into my mind one of these days. So I'm trying to enjoy retirement, but it's too busy. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. I really, really appreciate it. I'm very happy to be here, and um, it's always nice to be in Richmond.